For most of my life, I've struggled to define my passion. I have hobbies and a fun job, but I'm not passionate about either one of them. As the topic, uh, recently I heard someone describe passion as the topic you most like to talk about. So don't ask me about my children unless you really want to know about them. In my passion for my children, I have become a band mom. My work as a band mom has informed a lot of my life, including my teaching. I left the classroom when I became a department chair in 2007 and just returned to it this year. So in a way, I've had an opportunity to restart. This morning, I'd like to share some of the parallels I've found between being a band mom, between the band lot and the classroom. I wasn't born speaking band. I wasn't in a marching band myself. I just barely read music. But none of that matters when you have kids who make their own choices. In 2010, my son Austin started marching band in high school, and his sister Reagan joined him three years later. Their experiences made me better able to see students as individuals. In a band, a 4.30 call time means that the action begins on the downbeat at 4.30. The student is in their spot with an instrument poised at 4.30. Academic learning is not a lockstep endeavor, but attention to the details is essential. While I don't choreograph every step of every project, I do expect full attention to the details. Homework is essential. Quiet reflection and time to crawl inside a piece of music to engage sight, sound, and touch make a better musician. If a student knows their music and is given thought to tempo, rhythm, and the notes themselves, they will be better equipped to play their part in the ensemble when they get to class. Our students also need to set aside quiet time to study. They need to crawl inside course content to read, analyze, and problem solve. This allows them to develop the muscle memory to think during exams rather than try to remember the bullet list that they memorized last night. The drill may be boring, but it is essential. During marching rehearsals, I hear the directors ask the techs on the field to give feedback after a marching chunk. Sometimes the techs will film the student if they're just not understanding. Similarly, constructive comments on student work enables their learning to advance. Sometimes the student needs a little help to get to the next part. I don't know if you've ever traveled a few days with 50 kids on a bus or why you would ever want to. On long trips, we travel on charter buses. They have a restroom, but air fresheners have their limits. We eat on the bus, and sometimes the smell of cold cuts can linger with us for miles. Even on short trips, hot, sweaty kids are just part of the drive home. In the course of a semester, things can get a little stinky for students, too. When every class has a project, and every teacher gives exams the same week, and homework is overwhelming, the figurative stinky becomes an overfilled planner. In my classes, sometimes a due date for an assignment can be flexible, and I can let students determine the deadlines themselves. I honestly don't want to know how much money I have invested in instruments, instrument repair, reads, private lessons, spirit wear, tickets, travel, band camps, and band fees. We've had to make sacrifices, but for two parents who are not musicians, this has been an investment in two kids who've really been able to feed their love of music. College is expensive, too. I put myself through school, and it was challenging, but doable. Today, the expected income from a first job often falls short of what it takes to repay student loans. I'm sensitive to this, so if I assign a textbook, we're going to use pretty much every page of it. Every assignment that creates an expense must meet a course objective. If the band has a director in front of them, they are in a classroom. This might be on the parking lot, in the bleachers at a game, on a bus, in a hotel during a trip, or literally in a classroom. Band members are trained to work behind an imaginary glass wall that stands between them and everything else. Parents must stay behind the barricades. In my classroom, I tell students that I understand their friends and loved ones may want to intrude on their education by calling them during class time. I ask them to put their technology on airplane mode to reduce the distraction because late breaking news can probably wait until class is over. Safe spaces for learning are critical. In our band, we have 48 booster club committees and literally thousands of volunteer hours invested each year. In my six years as a band parent, I have chaperoned ball games, contests, and rehearsals, served ice cream and hot dogs, spent many hours sewing flags, helped assign uniforms, managed fundraisers, and coordinated trips. This is a picture of what many moms were probably doing just a few weeks ago, moving kids into their apartments or cleaning dorm rooms that were really not all that dirty. 
Many of my students tell me they talk to their mothers every single day. Parents are very invested in their students' success, and frankly, I forgot about that for a long time. Many parents want to engage. At State last year, I ran the length of this parking lot six times in an hour, picking up tickets, calming Reagan's nervous stomach, and managing various other crises. Students schedule back-to-back -back classes, many of them working long hours, and some are taking care of families. Sometimes a choice has to be made, and a grade may get sacrificed in that choice. We need to be 100% prepared 100% of the time, and that's not always possible. Attempting it is exhausting. This is a picture of my husband and me chaperoning at Grand Nationals. The most time I spent in a bed during that five days was three hours. I have never known that kind of tired. My children are fortunate to be part of a high-achieving music program. The trophies and medals are exciting, but the real accomplishments are their time management skills, creative problem solving, discipline, teamwork, and the ability to do two very complicated things at the same time. These are real life skills we want for our students here. So seek inspiration in unexpected places. The art I see teenagers display on a football field amazes me. If my 16 year old child can accomplish that now, just think of the things she can do in her life. Pay attention to things that spark your interest. Things that seem unrelated at first glance may reveal interesting relationships when you look more closely. And find balance between work and family. As a chair, I believed balance was a total myth, and it may be, but it's worth pursuing. My remaining years as a band mom are limited, but what I've learned along the way has challenged me as an educator. And if you and I are chit-chatting later and you ask me about my children, well, you've been warned. <laughs>